Yeah. All right. Nice to oh. take, thanks for taking the time. What's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the global pandemic and uh, yeah, <laughs> all the all the disasters uh, the, that have been going on in people's lives, including my own. But it's good to see you. You look great. Good to see you, too, man. I all like right. your shirt. Hey, yeah, you would know. This is your uh, I, this I is remember all the cart. Hey, you got great musical taste, my friend. Uh, I saw those guys several times. I bet you did. That was before my time, though. We're going to actually talk about my time right now. We're going to go on the record, okay? On the record. Let's do it. All right. 50 with 50 interview series. Uh, I'm very excited to be speaking to my guests today. Uh, I We've had numerous conversations before, but I am rejuvenated with the latest news of Joey Vera of Armored Saint. How you doing, Joey? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good to see you again and glad to be back. You look very well for surviving the global <laughs> black pandemic. How did you stay so sexy there? Uh, lots of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what else are you going to do? Well, you look no, good. I, I mean, uh, uh, you well, thanks. I mean, you know, just... You know, like, <clears throat> I think the biggest thing is probably try to maintain the sense of humor during this whole thing, because it was pretty bleak there for a while, especially in the beginning. So, you know, once you were able to, like, kind of, like, uh, laugh at everything like you normally would, then things started to just seem kind of normal again. So I think that's the key for a lot of things, just have a good sense of humor. Having a sense of humor keeps you grounded, balanced, and above all, uh, mentally sane. Totally. Absolutely true. Hey, we were discussing my T-shirt. Does this bring back uh, memories for you? Yeah, a la carte. Uh, great band. Um, I remember seeing them several times way, way back in the day, probably late 70s um, and um, early, maybe early 80s, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Power Trio, amazing band, just all great musicians, great songwriters. And like, they're probably one of those bands that I saw early on that really kind of like took this up, this idea that you could be a musician to another level. Like, you know, first I got into Kiss, you know, and like you're listening to records and you're rocking out in front of the mirror and all that stuff when you're whatever, 12 or 13. But when I was a little older, like 17, I was starting to go to clubs and starting to see bands that was like, that wasn't so like out of the reach, you know, of like Gene Simmons, but also just as like, just as talented and just as amazing, like at the Starwood and at the Whiskey bands, like a la carte, Smile and Snow and um, Yesterday and Today, back when they were called that. Um so they were they were one of the bands that really inspired me and, and a lot of my friends too to just like you know we could be musicians. Little did we know how hard it was going to be, but right, <laughs> it's another story. This is going to actually lead in, lead into a question that I have here. Being that you were exposed to that great early Los Angeles rock and roll, hard rock. I don't want to say metal because that I, I I don't think it would. Uh, I think it wasn't it would, that then. I don't think it would under I think it would undermine that great period in L.A. music because it was a period of sincerity and hard rock and, and energetic, just a fusion of, of all these different yeah. creative energies. Did that influence you for the Armored Saint project? Yeah, I mean, of course, all those bands did, you know, um, it all did. I mean, like I said, we used to go see Yesterday and Today at the Starwood and um, they were just a this kind of a local band from San Francisco at the time, just coming down to play LA. And, but they were just like one of the most amazing live bands I've ever seen. And, you know, just getting into their music, let alone their performance on stage, but just the music itself was like super inspiring. I mean, I, you know, come on, I, I've lifted several things from yesterday and today <laughs> to my career. borrowed, so we say, or, you know, influenced by yeah uh, cre creatively influenced would be the acceptable terminology yeah you know i mean i i never Definition. never denied it I, I i i honor lots of bands then lizzie's another one but you know um but yeah i mean a lot of those bands in the beginning had a big impact on 
the the music I would eventually write later in life, for sure. Watch how I gel this, the past and present day. This is the mastery of... Uh, of this is what you do. 40 years. Wow, I, I can't believe that. that yeah, cool. I know. In 1983, I took a RTD, not MTA, RTD, <laughs> non-environmentally safe bus. I think it was like 25 or 35 cents uh, to the Troubadour. I got lost. I had to walk like two, a two mile radius to get to the Troubadour to see you play. 40 years later. And I've shared Crazy. this. I've shared this with you before in our past discussions, you know, before the world came to a horrible end and well, a horrible right. stop. Uh, <laughs> the excitement, the, the, um, Jesus, just the, the danger element, the excitement, the, yeah. the whole element of the Armored Saint Live show, 40 years and you're still able to capture that energy. How is that possible? How do you do it? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think it just it's maybe goes back to that sense of humor thing, you know, like you just do what you do to stay young. And, you know, I mean, fair to say, like, all the all of my friends at least and i could probably speak for all of them even my wife to some degree you know like there's a certain part of our our, our uh generation that really has refused to grow up <laughs> so uh i'm okay with that and i think most of us are and you might agree with that 100 percent. 100 so you know i think that has a big part of it you know uh you know our band, at least specifically to answer your question, I mean, our band's always been about like going out and like, you know, just murdering people, like just going out and just taking over that stage and just, you know, just being being an onslaught like like nothing before. And that came from the feelings that we got from seeing bands like yesterday and today when we were 17, 16 years old. So we always carry that with us and we still do it to this day, um, you know, the best thing about being in a band is that, you know, either one hour, one hour and a half on stage, that's the best part. That's the payoff, hands down. All the other stuff is pretty much annoying. <laughs> um, I, I'm not having conversations with you, by the way, but just like just the, the getting to the gig and the traveling and living out of a suitcase and the business stuff you have to keep an eye on and deal with and all that other stuff that's not so fun. So that hour on stage is like, that's what we're here for. That's what we want to, that's what you, you give your 110% at. And that's how you do it, you know, and hopefully you have enough, you know, sense, like the older we get, like, you know, like I just finished working out, for instance, like I have to stay in shape, you know, otherwise I won't be able to do that. I won't be able to go on stage and give my all because my body is, I'm getting older, you know, so I have to. I have to be ready for that, you know. Didn't have to really worry about it when I was 22, you know. But now that I'm nearing 60, it's like, holy crap, you know. Like, I got, I can't let that go. So I want to still be able to play at a level where I think everyone, where I'm leaving it all on stage and, like, not leaving anything behind. So, uh, but it takes conditioning to do that, you know, so. I don't want to keep emphasizing on the time because uh trust me, I forty years that 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 makes me look at the yeah. mirror. that makes me look in the mirror and, and my weight size and my glucose levels. But uh forty Hey man, I, I struggle with that too. I glue close and the bad HDL cholesterol and you know, all this crap. It's like, what the hell is this? Come I back feel to, fine, but come back to the the dog. I'll give you some nopales. Uh, cactus is supposed to be really good for all that. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll try that. <laughs> Listen, 40 years. <laughs> I hate repeating it, but I keep doing it. 40 years ago. In 1983, I took that bus to the Troubadour to go see you play and with Wasp. And here you are doing this. Yeah. Present day, 2022. Yeah. Dude, yeah, 2022. Pretty, it's it's crazy. I know. That's incredible. It's kind of cool. I know. It's it's a crazy, like, um, I don't know, man. Like, you, you go through life, and, and I think maybe this happens to a lot of people, but you, you end up 
coming back full circle to a lot of things. Sometimes it's exactly. someone you haven't, sometimes you haven't seen somebody in a long time or some, some you're in a place you haven't been in a long time, or there's always this weird circle that, that happens through your life. And this is another crazy one. A couple of weeks ago when this tour, well, this tour has been booked for over a year now and we've been planning it for quite a while, but when things started getting moving quicker more recently in the last couple of months. And about a month ago, I got an, I actually got an email from Blackie and it was a really sincere and really nice email. And it was, the sentiment was basically what you're saying right now. Like, Oh my God, like, you know, 40 years, Years ago, like who would have thunk back then that you know we would be back on the stage together? You know, it was one of those kind of emails, and it was really sincere, and really, really sweet. And um, and I just it just hit me too. Like that's 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 exactly right. Like who would have thunk that we'd be doing this? You know, they're celebrating forty years as well. So it's a cool, really cool package tour. Uh, it's in the U.S. If, for people who don't know, starts at the end of it end of October in Las Vegas is the first show we're playing here in LA on December 11th, which is the very last show of the tour at the Wiltern. And it's just like going to be a crazy cool celebration of where we started and our, our past and our catalog and our history. And they're doing the same. And um, in fact, I know a bunch of their guys on their road crew. So and my hope is that it's just this big kind of love fest, you know, <laughs> and uh, and we're really looking forward to it. So it's going to be a really cool, uh, really cool tour. Let me just say this. By the way, uh, I don't know if you want to disclose this on the record. Did, did the Blackie Lawless uh, email show, please don't kick my ass like you did 40 years ago? <laughs> please, please don't. No, I mean, <laughs> please don't. Please don't destroy us on stage. Anyways, let me <laughs> let me share this with you. This tour is monumental for all demographics, for all age groups, because here it is 40 years later. I can't believe I'm going to have to take a fucking bus to the show like I did in 1983. Um, Maybe you can get use your Metro card this time, though. I remember. <laughs> oh, these gas prices. Uh, the, the excitement, the energetic uh, aura of this tour is monumental because... It reestablishes uh, what I've been saying in, in certain music journalists for a long time, the validated by time armored saint, not only on wax, but the live machine as well. And in conjunction with WAF, wow, that's it's and especially in this day and age with the economic situation, everyone's going to be recycling their cans to get some tickets for this and to have it on a, a, a tour. That's incredible. Yeah. Be that as it may, how do you prepare for that? I mean, just the, the set list alone. How, how do you, what, what, what is the mindset towards this tour? Well, it, that's pretty hard because, um, because we have a lot of, we have, a, you know, a decent catalog. And, you know, I think that a lot of fans have their kind of uh, nugget favorites that are, you know, kind of, gen uh, I think in general, a lot of people agree on. But then after those sort of obvious, favorite songs uh our catalog the fans love our catalog like a lot of deep cuts you know so it's really hard to sort of find the set at the site kind of please everybody you know um we're only getting about 50 55 minutes on stage so we don't do you know it's not like a headline set for us but you know it's a decent amount of time it's better than 40 minutes or something you know so we can play just for just about an hour um but even then you know it's still hard to choose what we're going to do. So the way we sort of tailored it was that we're going to play, of course, the, you know, the classics or whatever the typical songs you're going to hear. Of course, we have to play Can You Deliver, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, you know, there's a few others like that. And then after that, um, we kind of tried to stick to what has done well live in the past and what people uh, maybe kind of expect from other songs. But then we have this other pool. It's like a we have a set list of about 10 songs or something like that. I forget the number is. But then we have a second set list. that's like about five or six extra songs. And uh, John Bush is a, pretty much the leader of this idea. He hates playing the same set every single night. So uh, he thinks that, cheap, cheap, you know, kind of gyps the fans a bit. So 
we'd uh, like to have a second set of songs that we pull from on a nightly basis. And it could be sometimes on stage, even John will say, okay, we're not doing that. We're going to do this. And we all got to be ready. Um, and it's kind of cool because, you know, it fans, I think fresh, it, right? it keeps it fresh. It keeps it fresh for the band, you know, it keeps us on our toes so we don't get stagnant and bored with the set, but also the fans, you know, they, you know, after the first couple of shows, everybody's on YouTube and they're, telling everybody what the set list is, you know, so then by the third or fourth show, everyone knows who, what to expect, you know? Right, right. So, so we don't do that. We, we change it up nightly. Every night's a little bit different. It might only be two songs different, but it's going to be different than the night before. So that makes it fun for us and keeps it fresh for the crowd and the audience and stuff as well. So for us, it means more homework, of course, but, you know, that's like, you know, I mean, do I really need to practice? Can you deliver like at all? I, I, I don't, I don't actually, that's the answer is I don't. And yeah. there's a bunch of songs like that, but it's like, I don't need to practice that anymore. I, but I'd rather practice songs like, you know, I don't know, like uh, Aftermath or, you know, song, a deeper cut, you know, Book of Blood or something like something that's just not expected, you know? So that's more challenging for me. Oh, right on. Let me ask you this uh, uh, on the psychological mental health. It, it, it is full circle uh, and it must be very rewarding for you to to be able as a human being, as Joey Vera, the man to say that I've been doing this for 40 years and haven't succumbed to the cancers of this realm, which is narcissism you know, being self-absorbed delusional you know you always maintained uh being humble uh true virtues uh try true virtues no i can i can attest to that joey i listen i have a reputation for keeping it real i'm saying that but it must be rewarding for you after all this time to be able to celebrate such a magnificent career and then to be picked or asked to play with merciful fate. Talk to me about that. Cause that right there in itself to me as a longtime admirer fan. And I'd like to say this on a, on a personal level, but please don't ruin my, <laughs> my opinion of this, but as a friend of yours, that had to be very rewarding and very satisfactory and very indeed, uh, uh, uh a warm gesture for the merciful fate guys to ask you to play with them. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, I was, and I still am super humbled by that and uh, honored, you know, like that they would even, dude, you know, it's merciful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing, you know. I, I mean, I on so many levels, like I'm so grateful to be doing any of this. Forty years, going back to the forty year thing, um, you know, when I was 19 years old, starting out. I didn't think I was even going to live past 29, 30 years old. Like just, there was no way I was, they couldn't even, couldn't even think that far ahead, you know? So having been able to do this for 40 years and I've been very fortunate and very lucky to have so many sources of uh, stability and, and support, you know, whether it's from family members or friends or more, my wife or a record label that has allowed us to armor saying at least to be able to, you know, do what we want to do on our own terms, you know, for so long, we're so lucky. We don't take any of that for granted that we're able to do this 40 years on. We're grateful that fans have come along for the ride for this whole time. So it's, it's amazing. Like you could never ask for that. And, but here it is, you know, and then to have something like on a person somewhere else with, with another camp, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I still, I, I told this story several times before, but I know when I was 19 years old, uh, starting out with Armored State in the beginning, I started tape trading with uh, people in Europe. That was the thing to do back then before the internet and stuff oh, like very, that. Very well. Used to write letters, like actual pen to paper, and then like lick the mail and like mailbox. <laughs> Yeah, used you, to send letters back and forth to Europe. It was the only way to share information with people outside of your city. So or that your was country. the real internet, by the way. The real that internet. was where that was the real one, exactly. And one of the very first your pages, pen, right? Waiting for those things. Yeah, to back. I know. And when it would come in the mail, I was like, "Oh, I, I got a letter from <laughs> Holland. Like, this is crazy, you know." And so 
I got this cassette one day from a friend. It was a pen pal I made in, I think it was in Belgium. And he sent me this cassette and it was a merciful fate. Nuns have no fun. And uh, I played the crap out of that cassette. I loved it immediately. And it was so like inspir inspirational. And I just, I was so up my alley. It was creative and cool and dark and dangerous and all the above, you know? And so fast forward to like, you know, like last November when I was actually learning the set for, for Mercy and getting ready to go on tour with them this last summer. And then, and even like I'm on stage, you know, and I'm, I'm playing like, you know, Corpse Without a Soul. And I look over and there's friggin' <laughs> Hank Sherman. He's right there. And there's King. He's singing it. And I'm on stage. Right? And it's like, I'm like, what Dude. the fuck? <laughs> and I, just, I pitch it myself every night. Like, this is so awesome, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've been super lucky and super grateful that uh, I've been able to cross paths with so many really cool people and supportive people and great musicians. And, you know, I, shit, I don't take any of it for granted. I, I, a lot of times I'm like, I feel like, you know, like, why am I here? Like, something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> I'm, I, don't, I shouldn't be here, you know. Why would you say so, that? Because you've displayed uh, true characteristics, as I mentioned before, of uh, uh, someone worthy of this, uh, as new age people would say, this positive energy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I guess, you know, I mean, I understand that that idea. You know, I just, and, and look, it's not to say that I don't work hard because I know that I work hard. I have a good work ethic. Work ethic and I've been really lucky. i found myself in a lot of uh, you know, situations where I was, I was lucky to be in, you know, and um, I never wanted myself to be this kind of a, someone who took advantage of things or took advantage of situations. It's not really my style. So I've just kind of being a little more of a wallflower type of person. And, but, you know, I've been lucky in that people that come around me and the people I surround myself with are all really good people. And I think that it helps the cycle of, of the good stuff, you know? I agree. <laughs> so I, agree. I, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, so I, I, you know, again, though, I, there's a certain element of luck that's involved. And at the same time, you know, again, I do work hard. And so sometimes not always, as we all know, sometimes you work your ass off and nothing comes of it, but Sometimes you work your ass off and things come of it. So um, that's certainly been my case. I I need to ask this because uh, I remember hearing when the Merciful Fate Tour was announced. I was like, does Joy Bear have access to the uh, to the fucking uh, uh, research labs in South Dakota that are buried underground that are working on <laughs> interdimensional travel and the, the time <laughs> aspect of it? How is he going to do both tours? Alternate and realities. Yeah, and you displayed uh, true character. Uh, you stayed loyal to your brothers. You know that had to be a hard decision. Was it a hard decision? Well, well you know, I, a lot of people are saying that uh, to me. It's um, merciful, dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, for people who who don't know, maybe um, you know, I, I'm not doing the Merciful Fate tour this fall with them, uh, and the reason is because over a year ago. Um, I had booked this tour with Armin Saint with Wasp, and this was already planned like last October. Yeah, a year ago, basically. Plans were made. I had a conversation with King privately, and I go, hey, I got this tour. I want to book. What's going on with Mercy? Oh, we're only doing the summer, nothing else. Don't worry. Go ahead and do it. If you, you know, you, you know, and on this, as a side note, King has been super, super amazing with me about like not having to choose or not having to make anything a priority he's like whatever you want to do is fine by us we want to work with you but if something comes up and it doesn't work out it doesn't work out we work around it but you always come back so i was just like on top yeah. of all that other stuff like i'm just like really like it's like getting my cake and eating it too so that never happens so i'm super grateful for that so i'm not doing the tour and a lot of people have said just what you said that, oh, it must have been a really hard decision and yada, yada. And, and you know, 
it's it's a different it's a whole different situation as most people can imagine you know they're playing much bigger venues and it's a headline set and that kind of a thing but you know i made a commitment a year ago with a band that you know i was a part of from the get-go from the beginning these guys are my bros and we started this thing a long time ago we're still doing it and we love our fans and we made a commit i made a commitment to do this tour with the band so when this thing came up i was just like oh (laughs) you know like damn it you know but this is the this is the problem with being in five bands at the same time you know this this kind of stuff sometimes happens and it's happening now and it's one of those things where i'm like i was i made sure that everyone all the cards are on the table from the beginning so that there was no behind the scenes thing going on nobody knew like wasn't anything being hidden you know right so they were totally understandable and they're like they were like damn i mean king did his best to try to convince me he's like are you sure you can't move your you know are you sure you can't change your tour and i'm like dude you're killing me but you know what though joey (laughs) this this is uh, again this is in what i was saying these tests in life that with someone that doesn't have a strong moral character or uh, 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 any form of true characteristics of uh, uh, in my time, it was called being a man. And you know, now in this new age, everything's everybody's offended. But having true characteristics of, of being uh, true and loyal uh, again, and another wonderful example displayed just by these. I, I don't re- know. It, it wasn't that hard for me, to be honest with you. It was like, you know, even uh, I even had a conversation with Bush about it one day and he's like, you know, uh, you know, he's, t- he's telling me the pros and cons of everything. And I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Like I made a commitment. Yeah. Like it, this is kind of a no brainer. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, everything was, de- everything's depending on this for me. It, it's, that's not the case, you know? Yeah. It's, I'm going to miss out on uh, 14 shows with merciful fate, but they've, told me that I can, you know, I'm welcome to come back. They want me to play on their record. You know, it's like, you know, I, like I said, I'm kind of having getting my cake and eating it too. And, you know, I was looking forward to the tour with Saint. I am looking forward to the tour with Saint and Wasp. So that's, I'm still doing that, you know. And, and like I said, I made a commitment to do it. I, I really didn't think twice about it. I didn't even think about how could I call my agent right now and you know, explain to him why I want to postpone this or cancel this. It, that that thought didn't even cross my mind. It was like that's absurd. Right. I, I made a commitment. You know, I can't go back on it. Yeah. Well, I commend you for that. Let's mention uh, before I get into this. So, are you officially a member of Merciful Fate? They yes. Oh, dude. They, they want me to play. Yeah. We just uh, we just finished tracking uh, the drums for a new song, and um, I'll be uh, I'll be playing bass on the new song in the next week or two. Wow! So um, yeah, so I'm super stoked and excited. And you know, the, these guys uh, will say just briefly, they're an amazing. I became really really fast friends with them. Um, I've known them more as an acquaintances this whole time, but I really got to know them this summer. And everyone in the band and the organization is nothing but nice to me. And it's just amazing. We got along great. We did lots of hangs and a lot of, I don't know, it was just really easy. So, uh, you know, again, it's like, again, another lucky situation, you know, like it's, you, you can't plan those things. Like sometimes you get asked to do something and then you, you get in there and then there's just all this weird, like, in negative stuff or drama or something and there's none of that going on here so it's really cool i'm really lucky and i'm looking forward to working with them again in the future you know people are asking me too like oh does this mean that you're quitting armored saint no i'm not quitting armored saint i'm not quitting faith's warning not quitting motor sister you know i'm still very much involved in all the projects that i these people i work with i love them all and i want to keep working with them so I'm not being asked to make a choice, you know. So, uh, you know, again, it's like I very, can't very it. rewarding, so, man. Very rewarding. Yeah, I can. I'm really, really, really lucky, you know. I, I think uh, I, I admire that you say you're lucky. I think it's well deserved. You've established yourself as uh, indeed a, a titanic 
uh, level musician, which where they're oh. they're fortunate to have you. The work, oh. ethic, the work ethic, the uh, uh, oh. here. Let me kiss your ass a little bit. Come on, just take it. <laughs> the work ethic. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Definitely, <laughs> definitely the mental balance. Listen, I'm 52, uh, and I realize that health and mental health are the true wealth of life, and you've been able to have that and maintain that for over 40 years. So I commend you for that. So are you? Uh, you know, it's it's work. Are you going to be writing with Merciful Fate as well in the future? Um, I don't know. Um, it hasn't really been talked about you know i i sort of feel like uh i at least from my perspective i entered the room so to speak um and just was observing for the first i've been observing <laughs> and so uh you know i think that uh i mean i i think that i might be able to contribute something at some point but i don't it's not certainly not on my agenda right. <laughs> put it that way <laughs> To that question, I mean, way too much in advance for the future. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like it, it's clear to me, and maybe it's always been clear to everybody that it's this musically, it's all Hank and King. Oh, without a doubt, Hank is the riff master. King is the guy that I've just thought, re re recently found out. He also writes, but he's he's like a really he's really hands on with arrangements and um very like like microscopically involved in arrangements that but he he knows how to he knows how to take something and just make it unique you know and it's like when you see that happening you just like i just like you know <laughs> yeah it, you're in front of the master a true composer i just want to I'm, I'm here to play my part and um i'll right. speak up when needed but yeah i mean I don't know. I'm looking forward to, to seeing the process through the recording, though, That's because every band's different, you know, and so far I've only I've heard some demos and I've played on a few demos as well already. Um, but uh, we're, we're actually tracking our first song, the, the single we've been playing in Europe, which is the Jackal of Salzburg. Uh, it's like a nine minute song. It's crazy cool. Total, total classic mercy. Um, and uh, so I'll be playing the bass tracks on that in the next week or two. So I'm looking forward to that. That's so awesome. I'm very proud of you. And I'm very happy for you. And as a merciful faith fan, that's awesome. Let's Thank read you, man. Let's redirect it back to Saint. As you mentioned, okay. the, US, the US tour begins on the 28th in Vegas and it ends on the 29th in Anaheim. Uh yeah, no, no. Dece December eleventh. December eleventh in Los Angeles. October 29th, yeah. Anaheim is sold out. Yeah. Are you prepared to get those texts? Hey, Joey, can you give me the guess? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, it's starting. It's going to start happening now. That you, show sold out really quick. It's pretty cool. It sold out like in two days or something. You pretty all, amazing. Our, Armored Saint always has that uh, uh, achievement when it comes to SoCal. I mean, the Legion, it's great. the the Armored Saint Legions come out in full force. Even yeah. the, even the ones that are that should be home, you know, on dialysis, <laughs> they're, they're out there as well. <laughs> totally. Yeah, we've been lucky with this tour. I mean, I know Wasp has got to be happy too because uh, I think that we've we've sold out about nine shows or something like that at this point, which is like like during this crazy busy it's a really busy uh, touring cycle right now. Everyone is on the road right now. It's crazy how many bands are out there, and it's coming out of the pandemic, and you know, gas prices are high and inflation's high. You know, it's like but people are like. They want to get out, man. They want to go see shows again. They want a distraction because uh, the real world is becoming a little too real. Yeah, exactly. So, so I good, know. we some, need an escape. Yeah, some good music and, uh, you know, get out and forget about all the doomsday fucking events that are going on. Are uh, you going to be playing uh, the market in, in the United States? Are you excited to be going to these different regions? And yeah. Maybe, and with yeah. the caliber of the different age groups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, uh, this this tour is, um, it's a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of B markets in it, which is actually better for us because we tend, we, the touring that we have done is always, ten, it's tended to be the sort of the bigger cities, you know. So now we're doing these sort of outside the big cities or in between the big cities. But a lot of times, a lot of people, 
you know, they live in these areas where they don't, they can't get to Philadelphia or they can't get to Cleveland or whatever. So we're playing these other markets that are sort of in between. So people from Kansas can go there or from Illinois or whatever that outside of their regions, you know? So for us, there's so many people I've been seeing posts on our like social media sites that some of these people, a lot of these people, this is going to be their first time seeing us ever, which is again, 40 years later. It's crazy, wow, but it's amazing. But that's, a, that's an amazing thing that like, finally we're going to be able to go to play some of these territories where some people have never seen us. And so, or maybe they've only seen us once and it was like in 86 or something, you know? So this is a really cool tour and it's, it's a, the routing is great. It's, it's very long. It's six weeks long, almost six and a half. Uh, which is very long by our standards kind of. Um, and it's a lot of dates, not a lot of days off. So we got to be careful and stay healthy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we just announced that we're uh, doing some uh, VIP meet and greets, like upgrades to that. our tickets. Um, Cause a lot of people ask for that. Um, we weren't going to do it originally, but um, we started to get a lot of requests for it. So we decided to do it and, you know, there's always a safety issue, you know, with the health and stuff. But, you know, I just like speaking from experience when I just came off tour with Merciful Fate, you know, I mean, we, we didn't exactly have like 100 people backstage at all times, but we were we were around people all the time and no one was wearing masks. So I think it's just people got to use common sense. And that includes us um, about how you go about and, you know, who you talk to, what you do. Uh, whatever, wash your hands, you know, whatever you got to do to to be safe. So we decided to do the VIPs and we're going to be careful and people need to know it's, it's not going to be a Petri dish situation, you know. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to that, seeing, you know, meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. It's been so long, you know, since we've seen people and for like the rest of us, the rest of the world hasn't seen anybody. But um yeah, uh, we're all looking forward to it. You know, I had a blast this summer with Merciful Fate, being out on the road again after two and a half years and seeing crew members I haven't seen in four years and other band, band guys and bands that I haven't seen forever. It was just like this big love fest, you know, like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I think that that's going to be again happening on this tour uh, in, in the United States. And I'm really looking forward to getting out again and i know the rest of the band armored saint in armored saint is also so uh yeah we're you got to come out and see us so we're looking forward to it let me just throw this in there because i know you can't say it uh if you're sick <laughs> if you're contaminated in any way where don't, don't go don't go don't do the vip thing you know keep the band healthy uh with that thank you <laughs> Yeah, because you'd be surprised, dude. Some people are like, hey, drive, like it's full of snots and shit. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, I feel fine. <laughs> are, are you are you doing the meet and greet in Los Angeles, too? We are actually. Yeah. Oh, God, you're going to have those. I don't know that the Donald's all fucked up right there. Hey, 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 right in the day. <laughs> it's all good. Everyone's hey, welcome. Yeah, they bought a ticket. Hey, so Armored Saint New Music. Anything in the works with that? Uh, not not specifically no um not specifically we haven't sat down you know the way our band works is um we pretty much only when we're writing a record let's say or writing for a record we usually kind of sit down and say let's start writing you know um and so we don't we're not the type of band that like hey you know we've got riffs that you know work on riffs during the course of say downtime or pandemic right. time or whatever you want to call it in between records we don't write on the road um you know we've never been like that um so we haven't had that kind of sit down conversation yet um but you know i mean i have done some writing privately and um, i've even sent some things to john but it was never a discussion about this is for armored saint or this is for that sometimes john and i just write for fun and so um there's been a few things like that, but we haven't really um, haven't really got serious about it. Will this Wasp Armored Saint tour venture to Europe? Well, we wanted it to, but um, something happened. They couldn't get us on the European version of that, which I'm not even sure 
if it happened. They moved it to the spring. Ah, my memory is failing me in my old age. I can't remember. But um, <laughs> I thought that it would have been a great thing for Europe as well. Um, so we tried to make it happen, but it, it just didn't work. I think that they're either... They already went and already did it by themselves, or they're going in the spring and doing it by themselves, um, and they couldn't afford to bring uh, a support band. So right. I don't know what they're doing, to be honest with you, with that. But it would have been great, you know. We're trying to work on some stuff ourselves for uh, spring in Europe. Um, it's unofficial, but we're trying to get something happening with our booking agency, and also potentially some things in the summer as well in Europe and also here, but again, it's, it's uh, a little bit far out, but, but we're working on that now. Uh, let me mention this armored Saint, uh, not recently, but a while ago released reissues of the records on colored vinyl. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first three chrysalis records. Yeah. Will you be doing um, that for the remainder of the catalog speaking as a vinyl collector with these outrageous prices, by the way, but I still met. <laughs> Um, well, we have done versions of a lot of, um, let's see, I don't think symbols ever come out on colored vinyl, but I know La Raza did and Winhand Sound did, and I don't think Revelation did either, come to think of it, but that, I don't know, it's kind of like a, it's like a compilation record, I'm not sure it would work, but, but symbol might be good. We have reissued it, but I don't think on colored vinyl. Hmm. It's a good maybe question. something. Maybe something. To look into that. Maybe something to wait for excitedly. Uh, you yeah. you released last year, Symbol of Salvation Live. Will you be releasing any more live uh, material? Um, I think maybe. You know, there's still some out there that we have I recorded. This tour would, I think this tour would be amazing to record. You know, that's funny you say that because we I'm actually trying to make that happen at the, as we speak um, because um, we're uh, we might have the, the means to do it by uh, we're, we're taking some a bunch of equipment with us on this run that would allow us to actually record. Awesome. So um trying to make that happen. Yeah, it would be cool. All right, Joey. Well, let me mention this. The tour Armored Saint and Wasp. Fuck, that's amazing. I remember that bus ride and being lost and finding the Troubadour. Now I get to relive that all over again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to ride the Metro. I'm trying to get to, you know, wherever I'm going to be going to see you. Uh, this tour begins October 28th in Las Vegas. For those of you in SoCal, October 29th, Anaheim, that's sold out. But you know you get tickets. Uh, December 11th, they return to Los Angeles. Joey Vera. I want to wish you much success on this tour, which I really don't need to say that. Uh, anyone no. that's familiar Thank with you. Saint, the Saint Live ritual and the loyalty of the Saint Legion, they'll all come out. But I, again, I want to wish you uh, much luck on this tour. Health, Thank you. balance. Thank uh, you. Because balance in life is most important. I definitely want to congratulate you and wish you much, much success with the Merciful Fate collaboration. Fate's warning. Anything going on with Fate's warning? Well, um, not nothing I can really talk about. But um, a lot of people are saying that we've already quit and done. And we're done, but we're we're not. <laughs> we haven't officially hung up the towel yet. Um, but we're actually throwing around ideas about trying to do something. So, yeah. Okay. When that resurfaces, I uh, have an excuse to reach out to you again. With right that, on. sounds good. With that, Joy Vera, 2022. <clears throat> what an achievement uh, you have done as a human being, as a musician, um, for your fans, and also for those of you that are in the Northeast Los Angeles area. Uh, the inspiration and the example of how to be. Uh, thank you for being humble, sincere, and always kicking our asses on stage. With that, I wish you the best, my friend. Thank you, Jimmy. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. I uh, really appreciate it. And um, you be well as well. And we'll see you all very soon. Thank you for being on the 5150, my friend. Thank you. Cheers. All my pleasure. Yeah.
Keep it!